Hello and welcome to National Focus for Monday, September 2, 2024. I am Adicia Burton. In the headlines. Continued excellence for Dominica in regional exams. Students across Dominica benefit from Melissa Skerritt Foundation Back to School Program. And Dominica secures gold in ACVA Under-21 Men's Beach Volleyball Tournament. The details of the headline stories and more when we return. Ride safe, wear a helmet, safer roads in the nature aisle. This message was brought to you by the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Welcome back. For the first time, Dominica has captured three grade ones, four grade twos and three grade threes a total of 91% in CSEC visual arts. Physics is the most improved science subject in 2024. This as the Ministry of Education released the 2024 Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC results today. For the technical and vocational subjects, performance has improved in food, nutrition and health, family and resource management, industrial technology building, and industrial technology electricals, when we compare that to 2023. And in this group, the family and resource management is the most improved TVET subject in 2024. The diagram shows us that this year, more than half of our boys and girls left secondary school with skills in at least one TVET subject. CVET subjects are offered in 13 out of the 14 secondary schools on island, and this is excellent. We just wish all our 14 schools were offering TVET. Girls captured the majority of the grade 1s and 2s in TVET subjects, while the boys scored most on the grade 3s. In the 2024 CCSLC English exams, Arthur Waldron SDA Academy was outstanding. Castlebury Secondary is the most improved school in CCSLC English when compared to last year's score. 150 candidates wrote CAPE exams this year. 98 candidates, or 65%, passed a minimum of one subject and a maximum of eight, with either grade 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. In CCSLC Math, the top school is Arthur Waldron SDA Academy, which maintained its performance of 100% as it did last year. Portsmouth Secondary obtained a 100% pass rate. The Goodwill Secondary School, Pierre Charles Secondary School, Dominica Grammar School, and the Isaiah Thomas Secondary School have shown marked improvement in CCSLC mathematics in 2024 when compared to what they did in 2023. They also deserve a round of applause. 547 out of 639 or 86% of the candidates were successful at the 2024 CCSLC exams. When Dominica's performance is compared to that of the region, the register says the country excels. 30 out of our 32 subjects attempted are above the regional averages. <laughs> Dominica has performed overall 11.1% above the regional average in 2024. Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Octavia Alfred, has lauded Dominica's 2024 CSEC, CAPE and CVQ results. 
Speaking at the official release of the results on Monday, Minister Alfred commended the efforts of those who played a role in the success of the students. This year's results demonstrate that our students have sustained their general performance level while they have made gains in several subject areas. We have once again witnessed a performance by Dominican students which is above the regional average. I remind you, as did the local registrar, that these are preliminary results. And we should thank our secondary school principals, teaching staff, for your supervision and support. Other staff members at school, from the other people at the Ministry of Education, our parents and guardians, our general stakeholders, and most importantly, our students, for once again making us proud. Honorable Alfred reported improvements in a number of areas for Dominica's students. This year, we are happy to report that our students have shown great improvement in social studies. We have a 90 to 100 passing 15 subjects and 80 to 89 percent passing 9 subjects, which means that Dominica is 80 percent and above in 25 of the 32 subjects written. This indicates that our students have generally performed well, and many of them are meeting the set men benchmarks for success at secondary school. We heard that Dominica's average is 85.3, which is an 11.1% above the original average of 74.2%. Dominica is above average in 30 of the 32 subjects written. That's something to clap about. And Dominica's average has moved from 24% in CAPE to 51.75%. She congratulated Dominican student Ajani Casimir from the St. Mary's Academy, who delivered a historic academic performance, being the first student in the Caribbean to achieve nine CSEC ones and four ones at Cape simultaneously. We commend Ajani, you heard all of it from me, so I'm gonna say all that over. We commend Ajani for writing four Cape subjects while still in high school and passing all four at grade one level. You made history for yourself, for your family, for Dominica, and for the Caribbean, walking it with humility and grace. Dominica's results reflect the investments being made by government within the education sector. Greater progress is expected in TVET and youth skills with the development of infrastructural projects. This year's results once again demonstrated that our investment in education is yielding fruits. Education comprises a major component of the national budget and records one of the highest area for allocation of over $70 million this financial year. This government of Dominica has placed significant emphasis on skills development, particularly with respect to teacher training. Just about one year ago, you witnessed the groundbreaking ceremony of six China aid project schools. Among the schools to be constructed is the Goodwill Secondary School, which is earmarked to be a center of excellence for TVET in Dominica. This means that the school will be specifically designed to provide many technical vocational offerings to students from across the island. Within the next two years, our students will be exposed to cutting edge TVET equipment and training, with that is it is well poised to be the most modern Tibet facility within the region. Minister for Finance, the Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, has commended fellow government ministers from the OECS who met in Dominica Friday as they prepare for the 16th Ministerial Development Forum in Barbados in October. The forum will focus on resilience in action, social policies to navigate uncertainties in Latin America and the Caribbean. This theme encapsulates the region's commitment to human development, inclusivity and resilience with a nuanced lens on various challenges including climate-related risks. Your presence here signifies your dedication to the development and progress of our region and we are truly grateful for your participation. As we gather here today, it is important to acknowledge the pivotal role that the UNDP plays as the main organizer of this gathering. As an English-speaking bloc, it is imperative that we come together to address our common issues 
and bring them into focus. The thematic areas of discussion, including digitalization, climate vulnerability, and social safety nets, resilience, adaptability, and financing are crucial for our collective growth and prosperity. The forum will delve into strategies to enhance the resilience of social policies, ensuring they are adaptive and responsive to evolving needs and crises. It will provide an opportunity for ministers of social development, environment, finance and other related areas to collectively explore innovative approaches to address inequality, strengthen social safety nets and promote inclusive economic growth. It is essential that we exchange ideas strategies and engage in meaningful discourse to build resilience and adaptive social systems in our region. I want to express our deepest appreciation for the tremendous leadership that the UNDP has demonstrated in Dominica over the years. Since 1980, UNDP has been a trusted partner of the government of Dominica, providing invaluable support across various initiatives aimed at enhancing our nation's social and economic development. Their unwavering commitment and innovative approaches have played a pivotal role in strengthening our resilience and adaptive capacities in the face of numerous challenges. By centering the discussion on resilience within the realm of human development, the Forum can provide a holistic platform to address the drivers of vulnerabilities, ensuring that the benefits of social policies reach all segments of society. This theme aligns with the region's commitment to the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, and provides a forward-looking perspective on social development. UNDP's support has been instrumental in advancing sustainable livelihoods and, re and resilience in the Kalinago territory through projects such as the Strengthening Sustainability Livelihoods and Resilience in the Kalinago Territory, that's the SSLR. This initi initiative has boosted agricultural production, facilitated, com facilitated community reforestation, and enhanced the institutional capacities of the Kalinago Council, laying a solid foundation for sustainable development in that region. Minister for Health, the Honorable Kasani Laville, is appealing to men to step up in terms of caring for their health, particularly men who, based on their age, ought to be proactive against prostate cancer. The minister made the appeal in his address to commemorate Prostate Cancer Awareness Month under the theme, Prostate Cancer, It's the Time to Act. It is never easy to discuss prostate cancer. As men, while we are traditionally regarded as the protectors we are not known for our willingness to seek medical attention or admitting when we are not well and need help. But this year's theme is a resounding call to step up our game as men and commit to acting in our own best interest. September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, a vital opportunity to shine a light on one of the most prevalent cancers affecting men globally. The goal of this month is to ensure that men are not caught off guard by the deadly disease. Our objective this month is to increase awareness, promote early detection, and enhance support for those affected by prostate cancer. We have heard it mentioned over and over again that cancer is one of the leading causes of death globally, responsible for nearly 10 million fatalities in 2020. In the Caribbean, cancer stands as the second most common cause of death, recording in that same year approximately 1.5 million new cancer cases and 700,000 deaths in Latin America and the Caribbean. The Honorable Minister for Health says for a small region such as ours, these numbers are staggering and require attention and action. In 2023, the total number of cancer-related deaths in Dominica was 120, indicating a 12% decrease compared to 2022. Dominica also recorded 26 prostate cancer-related deaths compared to 31 deaths in the previous year. For me, this is personal. My dear uncle is one in this mortality statistic, 
as well as a few wonderful people of blessed memory that I got to know as Minister of Health and member of the Dominica Cancer Society. While we have seen a slight decline in mortality due to prostate cancer, the impact of these deaths remain significant. The Honorable Minister says the ripple effect that these deaths have on our communities cannot be overlooked so that even one death from this treatable disease is one too many. Prostate cancer is among the most common cancers affecting men. The Minister says early stages may not present symptoms, which is why awareness and screening are crucial. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Welcome back. Thousands of students at all academic levels have benefited from the Melissa Scarrett Foundation's Adopt a Child Back to School program, and this year will not be an exception. The foundation, now in its 11th year, aims to provide support and hope for Dominica's children. And these beaming faces that I see before me reminds me of my purpose, which is to give back to my community at every opportunity. And so today, you will see invited children from across the country. Yes, I host my event in Roseau, but the goodies are not just for the children of Roseau Central. Supplies actually have already been sent to other villages to support more children in need. I began giving back to the people about 15 years ago, behind the scenes in Roseau, specifically targeting single parents and then I focused my efforts also in the north of the island by doing complete setup of preschools and over these years I have built upon these foundations to extend to every nook and cranny of Dominica. Honorable Scared believes the education of our children should be an inclusive undertaking. Today ladies and gentlemen about 276 packages filled with the required school supplies will be given to the children. The packages contain vital classroom items, backpacks of calculators and lunch bags, geometry sets, binders, composition books. I got some pretty cute fancy stationery, water bottles, lunch kits, and the list goes on. I am of the firm belief that the education of our children is to be a shared responsibility and that the successful development of a child depends on the cooperation of the students, the parents, the school administration, as well as community members. Donor support has been critical to the work of the Melissa Scarrett Foundation. We started with the single mothers program, the back to school program, the elderly program, and as from last year you would have seen that I added the hurricane preparedness and women's symposium. My only goal in all of this is really to help elevate our people, to help to relieve some of the financial burdens, to lead comfortable and happy lives. Over the years, I must say that I have been fortunate to receive sponsorship from private sector donors, members of the diaspora, just individuals who are eager to give back to our people, the government of Dominica, as well as the government of the People's Republic of China. The children of Maho area now have an avenue to pursue a possible music career. The Maho Arts Foundation has been able to secure 10 box guitars from the Elizabeth Philbert Foundation. These guitars were utilized during a week-long summer music camp recently. We have been able to put together this one-week music camp for children in our community. The camp was really an opportunity 
for us to begin a new chapter in the development of our music in this area. We are fortunate to have had children from Maho, from Massac, from Jimit, and I believe Kinfield as well. And um, so we, it is really a community-wide effort. Mr. Esprit says the Maho Arts Foundation was set up to rebuild the arts and culture in Maho and neighboring communities. This music camp was in an effort to expose our young people to the playing of an instrument. And in this particular case, we chose the guitar. And there was a particular reason why we chose the guitar. The Arts Foundation was given a donation of guitars from a Dominican living in the diaspora. And we want to really thank her for that generous gift that helped us to start our program. So let's give her a big hand for that. Mr. Esprit initiated the idea of sourcing the instruments. When I look at that project, I don't think I could have write it up so. I mean, the project was so well written and convincing that as soon as I made the contact, the person read it, it was like, yeah, everything was just there. So, so well. Thank you. So in essence, the project was sent to the person around December 2022. 20, they got it in December, they made the contacts. The good thing was that somebody I met for another group, there's a group called the, the Six Form, Six Form Dominica, Sifu called Alumni Association. Um, very positive group doing a lot of good things in Dominica. So I met this person who's a Dominican from La Plaine. She's, her name is Glenda, Cheryl Glenda Filbert. Through collaboration with the Glenda Filbert Foundation, the guitars were in Dominica shortly thereafter. Two large acoustic guitars, three medium guitars, that's new. We had three medium guitars, reconditioned, and two small guitars. So you're talking about a total of 10 guitars that the foundation has. Five of them are here in motion already. Dr. Dublin says that's just the beginning of the project. The Elizabeth Filbert Foundation has expressed a desire to hold future summer music camps for children in Dominica. Dominica has emerged victors of the 2024 Eastern Caribbean Volleyball Association ECVA Under-21 Men's Beach Volleyball Championship. Two teams, men and women, represented Dominica in the ECVA Under-21 Beach Volleyball Tournament, which took place in St. Kitts over the last week. The men's beach volleyball team, Mervyn Mingo and Bill Frederick, established a strong momentum from the start of the tournament, winning against Bermuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Antigua and Barbuda in earlier games, to advance to the finals where they defeated St. Kitts and Nevis in straight sets to secure gold in the men's championship on Sunday. Meanwhile, the women's team, Alyssa Bully and Nyla Edmund, despite a strong showing, fell short of defending their ECVA Under-21 Beach Volleyball title. They defeated St. Vincent and the Grenadines and St. Kitts and Nevis in an earlier match, advancing to the quarterfinal where they fell short against Anguilla, finishing an overall fifth place at the tournament. The teams were coached by Ray Robinson and Jan Flora, with assistance from international coach Brian Gavlas. GIS congratulates the two teams on an exceptional performance at the tournament. Now for today's weather advisory. Moisture and instability associated with a westward moving tropical wave are expected to affect the area today into Tuesday. Cloudy to overcast skies with occasional gusty winds, pockets of moderate to heavy showers with thunderstorms and periods of rain are likely. A flood water warning may be issued during the day. People in areas prone to flooding, landslides and falling rocks are advised to be on alert and to exercise caution. Slight to moderate seas can be expected in open water, with waves expected to peak near 8 feet. Winds and seas could increase in and near showers and thunderstorms. A small craft advisory is now in effect for above normal seas. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. For today's hurricane tip, protect your personal documents and special items. 
collect and safeguard critical financial, medical, in educational and legal documents and records, back up all documents in a waterproof bag, and store electronic copies. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, thank you for watching. I am Adisi Burton, signing off.